Okay, so welcome back. Um, in the previous video, we did a review and teardown and simulation of the circuitry inside this uh, Bell plus Howell light bar. It's a very inexpensive portable device designed to be portable. It's got batteries, internal batteries that you can charge, and uh, it's a, basically a, a directional bright LED light. Uh, so we did a, um, a review and a teardown and looked at the internals of it. And um, after doing that, I decided that much of the features in here I really didn't need. I just need a bright directional LED light that I can plug in, turn on and off when I need. I don't need the batteries. I don't need to charge it. So what I'm going to do in this video is I am going to redesign this uh, using just the LEDs and figure out how I can set this up to be just like any other lamp on your desk or your bench where you just plug it into the wall, turn it on, and it's, it works. Okay, so last time we broke this uh, light bar, the uh, Bell Plus Howell light bar down, and we saw the internals, you got a couple batteries, you got a circuit here to allow you to charge and also to light these LEDs. And um, we basically said that this is really designed for portability, where you, you know, charge these batteries at night, it takes eight to 10 hours, you charge them at night, and then during the day, uh, you can use them from the batteries, but you can't use the lights while you're charging. Okay, you have to turn the lights off. So, um, also in the meantime, uh, since I did that previous video, I've ha been having all kinds of problems with this, where even when the switch is in the off position, these LEDs are lit. So there's something clearly going on with the circuit board, and I... Uh, for my needs, I don't really need anything inside this box. I just need the box. I need an on-off switch, and I need power to the LEDs to use it just like any other lamp uh, on the bench or on your table. You just want to turn the switch, it's on, turn the switch, it's off, and not have to worry about charging. So what I'm going to do is basically get rid of this and take a look at the LEDs themselves and figure out what I need in order to make them work with a DC supply. So here's the LED strip, and um, if you're not familiar with these surface mount LEDs, there's 60 of these, and here's the plus and minus coming in, and they're all arranged like this, these little yellow things are the LEDs, and it's hard to see, but if you look at it just right in the light, you can see these traces. And what happens is the plus DC, and we said these are like 4 volt batteries, plus DC comes in and runs along the cathode of every one of these LEDs and provides positive, and the negative runs along the anode and provides negative, and effectively all of these LEDs are in parallel. Okay, so they're all getting the same voltage, and the total current is whatever the total current of 60 LEDs is. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is try and look at the characteristics of these LEDs and see, you know, what's the normal operating range? They need 3 volts, 4 volts, how much current are they going to draw? So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to fire up my um, DC supply and see what, what happens to these LEDs. Okay, so here's my power strip. I've got my power supply. Everything's turned off. I'm going to turn this on and try to measure um, the usage of these LEDs. So it starts out constant current. I need to crank this up a bit until it gets to constant voltage. And now I'm in constant voltage. So I'm going to turn this voltage up very slowly to see... And there you go. You've got the lights going on around... 2.5 volts. Okay, you can see right there. Unfortunately, these dials are very, very um, sensitive. So uh, I crank it up, and I'm around 2.5 volts. And you can see they start to light. And if I go up to 2.8, 2.9, 3, you can see it's getting very bright, 3.2. Uh, and we're feeding about 0.8 amps at 3.25. So you can see uh, probably around 3 volts or something is, or 3 or 4 volts is where they're happy, and they're going to draw something like half to, an, half to 1 amp. So um, in order to find out exactly what the characteristic is, 
uh, I went online and found a um, spec sheet, a data sheet for LEDs that I think are fairly similar. I couldn't match, there's no markings here, but I found a, a, a data sheet for something I think is fairly similar. So let's take a look uh, what that says. And I also went through already and varied the voltage, measured the current on this um, set of LEDs and produced a graph. So let's take a look at the spec sheet and also that graph. Okay, so here's a spec sheet I found for what I think are some very similar surface mount LEDs. And you can look up at the uh, table here and you can see the forward voltage, VF, uh, at a forward current of 60 milliamps is between 2.8 and 3.6. And you can see what we just did is we cranked it up to about 3.2 and saw the lights were very bright. So that makes sense. Around 3.2 is probably the normal operating range. And um, if you look down here at this chart, uh, let me zoom in here. You look at this chart right here, it's forward current versus forward voltage. And down the bottom, it's forward voltage between 2.6 and 4.6 volts. And in milliamps, it's how many milliamps are going to flow. So at, uh, you can see it starts going around 2.7, and that makes sense because what we just did with the actual ones was hit it with about 2.7, 2.8, and they just turned on. So uh, if you get up around 3.2, this is the normal operating voltage, and they are expecting 20 milliamps to flow. So um, as you get up to 3.8, 4 volts, uh, you can get up to a tenth of an amp. All right, so um, that makes kind of makes sense. Now keep in mind we've got 60 of these in parallel. So when they say it's going to be 10 milliamps um, at maybe 3 volts, 3.2 volts, actually it's going to be 60 times that in our case. All right, it's going to be 60 times 10 or 600 or 6 tenths of an amp flowing through this entire array. So at least this gives us an idea of what we should expect. So now what I did is I went through and used my power supply like I just did and plotted the voltage, the forward voltage versus the current flow through the entire array of 60 uh, to see if it kind of matches what we show in the spec. And here's our chart and you can see starting down at 2.5, 2.7, they start to go on. Uh, and around 3.2, which is the normal operating range, you're getting up around 0 .6, 0 0.7 amps. So that's uh, 12 milliamps times 60 LEDs is about 0 0.7 amps. So that's the normal operating range. And you can see if you get up more toward 4 amps, you're going to get up into the um, amp and a half range. So it seems like it's reasonable that if you operate in 3.2 volts, um, you're going to get pretty much the expected normal. Now, 3.6 amps is the max. That's up here. You want to stay below that. So um, that gives us an idea. We need some kind of power supply, some DC supply to feed these that will give us about 3, 3.2 volts. And it's going to be pushing about uh, 7 tenths of an amp. So that gives us a good idea where to start, what we're going to do. Okay, so we know we're going to need about 3.2 volts, and you can see here's the lights uh, shining with about 3.2 volts coming from the power supply. So um, then we got to figure out, well, how am I going to get my 3.2 volts? And I just happened to have this 12 volt power adapter. It's 12 volt, um, 3 amps, I believe, uh, power adapter. So what I'm going to do, what I've already done is, is ordered a buck, what's called a buck converter which is basically will take this 12 volts and drop it down and regulate it down to our 3 or 4 volts, whatever we want, to supply these. And then what I'll do is I'll take this box and throw everything out or toss everything and just put in the buck converter, a switch, and we're pretty much good to go. Now, unfortunately, that's going to take a few weeks to get that because Amazon is kind of backed up with this coronavirus. But um, at that point, I'll um, put everything together and see how it works, and maybe I'll post a video.
So anyway, hope that helps. Take care and have a really good day. Thanks.